Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. We are here live inside the Cube, inside Silicon Valley's core big data community, and we are the Cube broadcasting all the signal, all the data, sharing that with you. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle. My co-host Jeff Kelly, big data analyst at Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Rick Stellwagen, Data Lake Program Director, Think Big, Terra Data Company. Uh, welcome to the Cube. Thanks. Happy to be here. Great to have you. Obviously, I love the word data lake. Dave knows I don't really like that word, but I like data ocean. But you know, data is a changing market, and we always like to joke, and, and, and we always have the debate. Um, you know, big data, fast data, small data, Internet of Things certainly changes the game. So, like, this data market's evolving very, very rapidly. Obviously, customers are deploying Hadoop uh, and other solutions in memory analytics. It's exploding. Big data is the killer app. You're seeing it embedded in applications. You're seeing it on the agenda for everybody out there, all the customers, and certainly, if you follow the money, <laughs> companies are going public and startups are, are, are rallying around. So. Rick, give us a take, okay? The, the data lake really implies, okay, data warehouse, you gotta have data, you gotta put it into applications, real time. What's your take on the current state of the big data market? Well, I think, you know, things have really evolved over the last few years. Um, I, I got involved in big data about three years ago uh, for Teradata, doing POCs and benchmarks for our global benchmark center, kind of globally. So had a lot of experience uh, as Teradata rolled things out. Um, and then, then uh, when Think Big came along, we were really excited to join them because they were able to provide a lot of guidance along that way. So what we've seen is uh, customers, they were dipping their toe in the water, they were playing around with it, they were, they were dumping data into the, into the lake or the reservoir or the, the ocean, whatever you want to call it. Um, say landfill. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and you know, and they really weren't, they weren't doing all the standard stuff that everybody's always done in data management forever, right? I mean, things that I've been doing and Teradata have been doing and all the other big companies have been doing, they weren't really putting the governance in place, they weren't making sure authentication of not only the users but the data before it was ingested, right? And they weren't doing all the normal things where you track and trace and, and, and understand the lineage of your data, because now we've added a lot, lot more lineage points and that's really the big difference Explain here. Explain lineage, because you bring up a good point. People, uh, from a compliance standpoint, would store everything. Right? The storage business has been booming because of it. Okay, store it, I'll get to it later. Um, but lineage brings up some knowledge about the front end of it. Can you explain what that means? Well, you need to know where the data came from. You know, where, so who, who was the source of it? Who had their original rights to it? How did it originally get created, right? And that's really important to be able to track it all the way end to end, right? So that's really uh, the big part, lineage. And then as the data transforms and moves into different forms, first to be just accessible, then to be maybe used for analytics and maybe to use for downstream facilities, you know, data warehouses may actually get involved towards the back end of it as well. So, um, you know, lineage points will track uh, anywhere from four to 12 lineage points oftentimes, sometimes even more depending on error handling and those kind of things, so. Yeah, I think, you know, to your point, data lineage is, is important for a couple reasons. One, because it, it helps you assess the, the validity of that data, the, the quality of that data to some extent. Where did it come from? Um, so when you're doing analysis, you can actually have some confidence that it's going to deliver uh, good results. Uh, but of course, also there's the compliance question. You've got to you've got to show you know when the when the feds come knocking, you've got to show who touched that data, when, where, came from, that kind of thing. Um, but talk a little bit about lineage, though, in a big data context, and specifically a Hadoop context. Are there challenges that are not that we don't see in the more traditional data warehouse space and more traditional database space when it comes to tracking that kind of thing, understanding it? Are there some nuances in, that are specific to big data and Hadoop that, that you need to tackle? I think it's more of a cultural thing. It's not really a technology thing. It's really mm. kind of people said, this is a new thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it real quick as fast as I can. And they kind of forgot about their roots and what really needs to be there. There really isn't anything preventing you the same kind of security and providence and, and authentication, it's all still there. And it's not, it's not that it is, is missing, it's just mm -hmm. it's whether it's being used. And really, people, how do you apply the practice to this new kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just want to take a step back, actually. And just let's, You talked about the different terms, John. Data ocean, data reservoir. From whatever you call it, how, how it's not going to be adopted anytime soon. I'll tell you that. Right. So from from <laughs> uh, ThinkBase perspective, I mean, how do you define what is a data lake? 
Um, because I think we're seeing a few different concepts out there. From your perspective, what is a data lake? Let's well, to us, a data lake is a jumping in point, to, to use another metaphor, but but fundamentally, you know, uh, it's, it's the point where you get data into a Hadoop you know, cluster or a set of clusters. Um, and and we want to make sure that we track how where it came from, all mm -hmm. right? And that and that's the, kind of the beginning because what we want to see is what you're going to see is how the, as the as the, the data comes in, it gets schooled and organized and transformed. It, it then becomes a, like a data reservoir. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, what we build, what we like to say is our data lake program is all about building a data reservoir. Yeah. So, so talk a little bit about that and 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 how you actually go about um, actually building out a data lake in a um, you've got to be agile, but you also have to be you know, secure, uh, compliance, data lineage, all those kind of things. What's Think, Think Big's approach um, to actually practically accomplishing that? Well, we always start off with a, kind of an architecture strategy session. We try to understand the objectives and understand the data streams that, that they want to they want to flow into the lake. All right, so we kind of start off by understanding that, and sometimes we do where we kind of boil the ocean and look at everything with big companies and look at all the sources and just come out with a plan. Sometimes we get really focused. We have some starter things that where we kind of like, let's just look at a couple streams and get one data owner or steward so you can really show success. And not, most of the time, those, those data owners or stewards already have an application in mind. All right. They may have they may have a, an application, or they may be doing something like offloading a reporting system. They may be doing something like adding a new thing where they're ten, trying to look at their machine data and try to uh, optimize their manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. So when, so we kind of start at the very beginning, do this planning, you know, um, type of approach. We we have a team based. Okay, so we're not like a couple unicorns. This is the new term, right? Um, where you come in and 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 have an expertise, but there's like we have several experts in lots of areas. And we we able to look at holistically, right? So we have a data scientist, we have cluster management guys, we have we have Hive guys, we've got you know Spark guys, we have everything you, you name it. We we kind of cover the gambit, and each area uh, is focused. We're able to come in and look at that strategy. So once we kind of like laid out an architecture and design, and you know two to four weeks time frame, you know, then we, then we start to deploy, right? And we actually, and a part of our architecture and design is deploy. Um, a serious governance, right? So right at the beginning, like we talked about, at the source, we're, we, we gather and capture um, metadata. Um, operational, not just schema metadata, but operational, business security, business index types of metadata, all those kinds of things. It's going to require some customization in the front to understand the engagement, right? And understand the people and the organization so that you can capture that up. What's so cool when I joined Think Big is that they've been doing this for four years where they captured that metadata up front they kind of work on, you know, Hadoop has some issues with ingesting data. Either it's big file problems or small file problems, and we all know about them. Anybody just played around with it. So think they kind of sort of said, you know, we got to understand the data. We need to get it ready for ingest. Let's really understand the, and then and then, we'll, then we throw it across the wall. Whatever trans, transport, secure transport method you have, we do the ingest, lay in the data and the metadata together, right? Use the metadata to know how to do the next step. Mm -hmm. Maybe even push the metadata into a tool that allows you a visualization so you can graphically see your lineage. Sir, I got to ask you the POC, you mentioned global benchmarking. Global is a huge issue. Every time we talk about cloud and our big data, the global consumption contract with customers becomes pretty big. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's hard for startups to compete at a global level. They have to have usually partnerships. Um, you guys are doing a lot of global bench. Talk about that specific global impact in terms of the customer. Obviously, large customers are going to have that kind of global requirement. Um, and then the question I just posted on the crowd chat is uh, to add on to that is that our, the Wikibon data shows that the buyers are shifting workloads. Uh, how, is, how is Teradata dealing with that shift specifically? The global and then the shifting of workloads and how does that impact the data lake and, and whatnot? Sure, global, well, it just depends on the company and the, and the business they're in, whether or not they, they're going to do everything on premise versus they start to move to the cloud, right? So we've got some customers that, most of them are staying on premise, okay, because Teradata is used to the Forge in 2000, right? And, yeah. and you know, we, we have a lot of banks. None of that stuff is ever going to go to cloud, right? Um, but, but there's a lot of, lot of high-tech manufacturers where they can kind of control things, and, and really the interpretation of this binary log data is not, so, not, it's not a secret. It's not, you know, only, only they can understand it, and actually uh, Teradata think they help them to understand that data. So that kind of stuff goes to the cloud a lot. So we see deployments going either way, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's really a, a combination of secure and public, but 
frankly, what we're seeing a lot more emergence is the private cloud, and so th and that's really where you can guarantee end-to-end -end security, and you know, there's VPNs in place, and so you can make sure that you, those things can, so that's, that's really what we're seeing a bigger shift right now with our customer base is going towards that private cloud, not so much the public cloud, where you can drive the cost down a lot more into public cloud, there's no doubt about it, but you also open yourself up for more vulnerability, mm -hmm. right? And then the second question, it was around. Shifting the workloads, how are you guys dealing with that workload shift? Exactly, so that's exactly what I've been doing for the last three years with the Teradata Base. A lot of the Teradata Base wanted to move their history off of Teradata, the warehouse, and be able to concentrate and focus on the, the most recent few years. And so, uh, so, so we've seen a big shift of moving his historical data, some stuff that's cold, mostly, off of Teradata, um, and into, into the data lake. Okay, and actually Teradata has built all kinds of tools to promote that, to tell you the truth. So we have you know, federated query, we have this thing called Query Grid, and all those kinds of things that help you do that. So Teradata as a company is seeing that shift, some archiving going on. Sometimes the, the deep history is necessary and needs to stay inside because you still can't touch the analytics on the Teradata side, but you can certainly do deep history and, and lightweight analytics, aggregation and multidimensional analysis over in the lake very readily. So. So it's interesting. So in the past, when we is this essentially uh, causing any kind of um, issue around the basically revenue stream of Teradata? So you've got moving some of the older data off to the data lake. In the past, was that data kept on Teradata, or was it just maybe discarded, put on tape somewhere else, um, or is this kind of a new approach? Well, no, it, usually there's, they, they would keep the history as long as they could, mm -hmm. right? And they may offload it and then bring it back online. So what, you're allow, what, what really Hadoop allows them to do is, is be able to bring the uh, more history online quicker. Mm -hmm. And that's really, so they're really not changing the practice. They really had to, you know, um, consolidate what they did or add more nodes, mm -hmm. right? Um, so so we, saw, we see a lot of that. But, you know, I'll tell you the truth, you know, Teradata has made his business out of uh, unplugging Oracle and SQL Server instances and consolidating silos, okay? Mm -hmm. And so we've always did that with the analytic workload. What we're seeing now is more the operational workload mm -hmm. moving over to Hadoop. That's really been the big focus because, frankly, the technology in this space lends itself more to that kind of workload. So, so it's not really so much an erosion of what we've seen in our actually expanding of our revenue base, including more things that we didn't normally do. It's not really in our wheelhouse, mm -hmm. you know, um, not from a cost effective. So when you say operational workloads, what do you mean? What, what are some you examples? Know, of um, you know, BI reporting, multidimensional analysis, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Roll-ups, traditional OLAP kind of stuff, right? You know, mm -hmm. those kind of things, we see a lot of that happening in the, in the data lake. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, uh, ThinkBig has built IP around that, mm -hmm. the very reporting. So, kind of building on that, talk a little bit about you know building and running this professional services business in the big data context. So we've got you know part of you know we talk to practitioners in the early days. Of course, it's what is Hadoop? How do I bring it in? Yeah. How do I integrate it? Um, but you're seeing things like yesterday's with the yesterday with the uh, open data platform announcement, um, which Charity is a part of. You know, the, the goal there is to really solidify the core of Hadoop so it's, it's kind of spur adoption. As Hadoop itself matures, how does that change what a professional services firm like ThinkBig does? Are you, are you finding you're doing less work around kind of that initial building out the, the foundation and moving more to, to more of some of the advanced analytics? How do you see that playing out as the technology itself kind of matures and gets, gets uh, stronger? Well, it's important to note that um, ThinkBig is really agnostic mm -hmm. to all of these things, and we plan to deploy it on Cloudera, Mapbar, and Hortonworks equally and whatever our customer base sends us to. It's also important to note that we're always hardware agnostic as well. So we're a pure play Hadoop vendor, professional services. So these things like the consortium that you mentioned before is cool, I understand it, and we'll be able to leverage some things more. Maybe there'll actually be a meaningful metadata standard someday. Uh, uh -huh. I've been part of many over the years that never never seemed to have taken off. So uh, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful maybe that will happen and consolidate, but. The forces usually drive that away from that. So it's challenging too. Talk about how hard that is to pull off. I mean, the metadata piece of it is really a critical piece, but it's hard to just. Start well, every playing. software component has its own metadata and needs to manage it and control it. And so the last thing they want to do is be dependent on somebody else's metadata repository, <laughs> right? So that, yeah. that that's the reason why it's always kind of never happened, right? Um, but 
you know, and there's consortiums and, you know, it happened and there's, there's products out there, really big ones that are very expensive that, that allow you to be able to bridge between all those metadata pieces. But most people don't want to spend that million dollar plus yeah. on that kind of it's stuff. It's a customer for forcing function too. The customers at some point have to move down and evolve and say, okay, what's state of the art, what's bleeding edge, what do I need as a requirement kind of table stakes. So, so with that, I got to ask the question from a customer's perspective, looking at the big data SV uh, landscape or the Strata conference and Hadoop world, what is the customer's view of, if, if they're looking down on the stage, if you were from the balcony of, of the industry, because they're the ones who really will be deploying these solutions. Um, what, are they, what do they think of all this, this acting going on? You know, the big companies going public, like uh, Hortonworks, got Cloudera is growing, and MapR, you got startups, you have the big uh, uh, players like Teradata out there, global scale. What's the view from the customer? Are they moving along nicely? Are they confused? Are they, are they looking at for consolidation? What's your takeaway if you could tease that out? Well, I think they, they really are looking for both two things. Really important is practices with open source, the right practices to be able to use. And, and also, they're really looking towards this consolidation where you're seeing these components that are kind of loosely coupled now to be much more tightly coupled, right? And so, uh, and because it's just, it's one big system integration nightmare sometimes uh, to pull all these things together. And so, you know, professional services organization like Think Big, you know, become experts at being able to pull those pieces together. And out of that kind of grew IP to actually accelerate that, right? So, so that, you know, that, that's kind of the natural evolution of what happened, re reusable assets and, and moving on like that. So the customer is looking for any, any kind of help. They're, you know, they're looking for a team to come in and guide them in all different aspects of it, and kind of give them an overall strategy um, and try to figure out exactly what path to take based on their particular data sets or their streams or their, their enterprise requirements because their system, you know, their system of uh, system environment could be different every place. So, so really they're looking for guidance. Um, consolidation is really going to be critical. I think there's no doubt about it. So these consortiums, I hope things go good for them. You know, from our perspective, it could it could just be another piece, another um, uh, less things we have to integrate with. Right? As an industry observer, obviously, and a participant at, at Teradata, obviously, you're not a VC or you're not uh, you work for Morgan Stanley, or Goldman Sachs, the big guys. Um, there's a lot of action going on. People are getting funded, super funding. There's a lot of startups out there that are looking for a home. And we were saying on our intro, you know, consolidations happening. You know, we see new waves coming, like Internet of Things. You're seeing things like metadata discussions is is critical. So, you know, we are obviously pro big data. We think that's going to be part of the force of the cloud and obviously infrastructure with virtualization, seeing some, some cool things there. So there's always another wave coming. So what do you think about that? I mean, if you look at, you know, your friends all work for startups, we all have friends who work for big companies. What's your personal take on this market? Do you think there is another wave coming? Is it Internet of Things? What's your take on startups? What should they do? Um, some startups might not make it, some will be hired or acquired for hiring purposes. This growth certainly in this market. So what's your personal take? Well, on you see the growth in, this, in all the, all the real activities in Spark right now, right? So that's kind of where Spark is starting to grow up, right? We've been using it and playing with it, and it's, it's, it's great stuff, and it has great promise. I think it's got a lot of growing up to do still. And, and that's where we're seeing a lot, of the, a lot of the money go towards these days, right? And all the startups, a lot of the startups are focused on that and, and, and leveraging that in some way, because that's the next wave of open source kind of thing that's really hot. So we're seeing that um, as one of the big, big trends right now. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, the people that have focused and, and invested so much in MapReduce, um, what's going to happen, right? Because is this another shift for them? You know, uh, right now it's clearly not yet, but, um, you know, as a, mature, as, a, as a technology matures, it'll be real interesting to see the migration. And companies that are able to navigate and be able to move their customers quickly from one open source platform to another are going to be really successful. Right? And so you see the value opportunity for companies to provide value to customers in, in what? What's the number one thing you see right now on the table for value creation on behalf of the customer? Migration, new apps, what's, what's your take on that? Well, um, uh, you know, frankly, uh, I think it's both migration and, and uh, new apps. What's super exciting and what's always going to be the highest revenue is the new apps for, for businesses, right? So, and able to, to do uh, more streamlining and, and quality control, right? So we've seen a lot, especially with machine data, log data, that's really what it's all about, right? Is, is tuning up the quality, getting rid of the scrap, making sure you fix the process, be able to react to, to how, your, how your product um, operates in the field in a real-time kind of basis, yeah.
So Rick, we really appreciate you coming on, on theCUBE, sharing your personal opinion as well as what's going on with the company. Um, final question for you is, what's your take on the show this week? What are you expecting uh, out of Strata Conference, Hadoop World, and all the activities? Certainly there's a slew of parties. We're having ours tonight at seven o'clock. There's a lot of networking, uh, a lot of cool stuff happening. What's your, what do you see evolving this week? What's your big focus, and what do you, what'd you say is going to be the big outcome from this week? Well, I'm going to really be paying attention to the startups, okay? And I'm really excited to join Think Big, who really focuses on that, likes to really get involved with startups, and that's where, where my background was uh, for a long time, is, is yeah. being involved with startups. And so, so really taking a look at the new technologies to see how far I, I noticed some metadata um, startups out there. They just popped up all of a sudden. I got, you know, you know, people notice me on LinkedIn and say, oh, Benedetta, you, you want to know about this, right? So there's a lot of we stuff. We need you, come talk well, to yeah, us. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, well, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah so, uh, you know, uh, so there's a lot of interesting stuff there. You know, the machine learning stuff, always been a, a fantastic thing. And, you know, I think we're going to yeah. see more AI happen, right? So, and that's really what's exciting right now. We love start startups, too. I mean, I think that that's going to be the great innovation engine, certainly as the big whales start to leverage their expertise. But but the startups are in an interesting spot, so i got to ask you the kind of final, final question. What's the mindset of a startup in your opinion, what would you say to your startup brother, brothers out there and, and sisters saying, you know, in this week, you know, what's the mindset? Partnerships, survive, get revenue, all of the above. If you had to like say to the startups, you know, focus, what would that be? They need customers, they need partnerships. That's the number one thing. They need to, they need to partner up and line up with co companies like us that have a lot of customers that are ready to, to and eager for this technology because these companies, they don't want to invest in early stage startups, right? But, the, but Companies like Teradata or Think Big, you know, they're able to bring, you know, these startups to be able to, to mm -hmm. be useful, right? And yeah, I mean, introductions, just, right? Absolutely. I mean, just so just to put it bluntly, I mean, do you think there's all these little startups out there on the floor at Hadoop World? You see the Hadoop Summit and some other shows. Is that floor going to get smaller next year and the year after? Are we going to see acquisitions? Are a lot of those companies going to are they going to make it? How do you see this? market evolving in that sense? I think it's going to stay pretty close. I think you're going to have consolidation, but you're still going to have a whole new br branch of stuff within memory happening, mm -hmm. to taking the forefront, right? So if that can really scale like we, we hope it does, right, and, and memory prices keep going down, then I think that you're going to see a lot of shift over there, right, and some consolidation will happen. All right, Rick, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it, Rick Stalling. Data Lake Program Director, Think Big, a Teradata company. Uh, obviously, the startups where the innovation happens, and we think it's going to be a great growing market. But people are going to have to start making their moves, and it's certainly exciting for theCUBE. We'll be, we'll be sharing that with you. We'll be right back after this short break. Uh, this is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly.